What up guys, Carlos here, AKA Lobo Films, and today I'm gonna to be taking you behind the scenes on my most recent video. So for this video, I was using my iPhone 7 to film it, and then I used the gimbal made by Uoplay, which costs about $200 around there, I'm not sure, but I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. So the reason why I'm making this video is because for the last two months or so, I've been getting a lot of emails and DMs on Instagram from people just asking me what's a good camera to start with or people are telling me hey man I'm just starting out and I want to film myself working out or film my friend working out what's a good camera to use so at first I started telling people the camera that I started out with or did a little bit of research and was seeing what other cameras I would I would use if I was gonna start filming um, and I started noticing like it's still kinda of pricey no matter what camera you want to get just to get the body and then you also got to keep in mind, you got to get a lens for it. You got to get a gimbal if you want some smooth shots. And I figured like, damn, that's a lot of money that you have to spend right off the bat just to film yourself for fun. So let's say that you bought the camera, you bought the lens and you bought a gimbal. And next thing you know, you've spent close to $2,000 just because you want to film yourself working out or a friend working out just for fun. Like versus when you could have bought a gimbal for your phone for $150 to $200 and try it out. I want to encourage people to use their phone, to buy a gimbal and use it for their phone and do that for the first six months. Just because what if you don't end up liking it and then you wasted $2,000 because you might like filming but then when it comes to editing, I know a lot of videographers out there that love to film but when it comes to editing they hate it. Versus like for me, I love filming and I love editing but for some other people that's just not the case. So it'd be better to waste $200 on a phone gimbal that you tried using filming yourself and then you started trying to get into editing, but then you realize, you know what, this isn't for me. I don't want to do it anymore. You know, a lot of people, they like the idea of being able to film and edit, but when it comes time to do it, like sometimes people just don't get it and it's not for everybody and that's okay. Like for me, for instance, when I first started, I used my iPhone for the first six months and all I did was film handheld because I didn't even know anything about gimbals. And then on top of that, I was editing using I, the iMovie app on my phone. Then after those six months, I transitioned to a camera, which was the Canon 70D, and I got Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, and I just remember the first time that I opened Premiere Pro, I was like, holy shit, what is this? A completely different monster. And for the first month, I was so overwhelmed by it. But I was determined to get it down, and I started watching tutorials and getting better and better over time and now I'm really comfortable with Premiere Pro. If you're already been filming and you know you like it and you want to eventually turn it into a business then yeah of course you gotta get good uh, good cameras, good lenses, all that stuff because people are paying for your services and you want to give them the best quality that you can but like I said this video is really gonna be targeting those people that are just starting out or only use their phone and a lot of people think, man, I can't make, you can't make dope footage with a phone. And that's, that's not the case. Um, you can definitely do some good stuff with a phone. So with that being said, I'm going to take you guys behind the scenes so that way you can kind of see how I move around and the way that I do things. Um, whether it's with the iPhone or with a camera, nothing changes. Like I always do it the exact same way. And honestly, it's just what works for me. Now, is it the best way or the right way to do it? I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> but um, it's what's been working for me. Now, it doesn't mean that whatever I do, you have to do. I just kind of want to put it out there so that people can see like the process that goes behind making a Lobo Films video. So right here, the shot that you're seeing is actually the intro that we're going to be doing. Um, I had an idea of like coming out and then handing the camera to my dad and have him kind of like go down to make it all like one seamless movement. And I was going to use that like as a transition onto the next exercise. Um, I had my dad there because he was actually shooting the whole behind the scenes for me and since I had him there I was like might as well use you for like this part too I think it would come out really cool and it actually worked pretty good whenever I'm doing videos I I never like to stage anything um, except for the intros so that would be the only thing that I stage for the rest of the workout though I let the person whatever they want to work out whatever they want to do I'll work with that and we and we just make it happen I want the video to have a real feel to it and the way you're going to get that is by letting the person just work out and do their thing. So after that we went to the first exercise which was this dumbbell press that he wanted to do 
and um, you'll notice that I'm always moving left to right, up and down, and I try to mimic the movements of the exercise. So when he presses up, I was going up. When he came down, I was coming right back down. Um, then I'll switch it up a little bit and then do just like a straight forward shot, like walking towards him. And then I'll switch back or I'll start spinning around him. Um, and just constantly moving around, finding different angles. Because you never know once you're editing what exactly you're going to want to use. So this next exercise, you'll notice that I'm starting up. And that's to go with the intro. So with the intro, we were coming right back down. And then you have to start already up and then come down for your next clip. So that way it all kind of like combines or meshes together really well. And once again, you'll see me moving left to right all around. And at first when I started filming, like I used to be kind of not embarrassed, but I just didn't want to get in people's ways. And lately over time, once I started getting really good, I was like, I don't give a damn. I'm going to get my shot whatever it takes I don't care and for the most part like a lot of people there at Metroflex already know who I am because I'm always there filming so much so right here you'll notice he's doing like a we're gonna do a freeze frame shot so like I have him hold it and then I walk over and then right when I get to a certain point, I'll tell him go and then just have him keep repping it out. And that's usually how I do my freeze frame shots. So that would be another thing that's staged in the workout. So usually like an intro or an if I want to do an effect besides that, just let them, let them work out, let them do their thing. Um, a big thing that I like to do when I'm filming a workout edit is I make sure that the person does no less than three sets. So usually three to four sets is a good amount to where you can get all the angles that you need for that exercise. Um, and for this next shot right here where he was just posing, um, I like to throw that in sometimes randomly. So we'll suggest like, hey, do you want to do a pose? And then I can spin around them. I never know exactly what I want to use it for, but a lot of times it can come out with a cool effect or when I do like the little earthquake effect, I usually like throwing that in there. Um, here's another shot of me just walking in and then going left to right, you know. I like starting out a lot of my um, shots for like a certain set. I like to start it going straight on at them and then start moving side to side. But the key thing is to always keep moving. Like you don't want to have just one stationary shot the whole entire time. Cause when it comes to editing, like it's going to be really boring if you have nothing but just stationary shots. Right here I point it up and then I come down right when he comes down. So like, like I said, I, I'm going to use that as a transition point from the last exercise. So a lot of, a lot of my transitions, sometimes I plan it ahead of times, unless I'm going to do like a speed ramp, then usually I can find a way to make any exercise transition to another one just by always moving around but that's going to be it for this video guys um, as you see it's not like a whole bunch of tips or big secrets I mean the main thing is to just always move around I think a lot of people are surprised once they once they film with me and they see how much I move around and how fast I'm moving around and um, that's just the way that I like to film I like my videos to be really fast paced and quick cuts and always changing direction and changing angles and more than anything I feel like that keeps the people wanting to watch more because you're always switching it switching it up on them uh, hope you guys liked it make sure to comment leave a like subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one